Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. I like making these kind of videos, you know, the um, brands I'll never review, I like today products I regret buying, but someone left me a comment recently saying that all my videos recently have been negative, and it's pointless talking about products that I don't like. But I also feel giving a negative review is doing the same thing as giving a product a positive review, it's just narrowing down the options for you but in a different way. However, whilst I am sitting here like slagging off products, I think it's only fair that I offer some what I consider better alternatives or what alternatives I bought that work better for my skin. So that's what I'm going to do. Today I have products I regret buying and they're better alternatives. Oh, but before I get going, my Wish Trend collaboration box, my Winter Skin Saviors is still up and running. I think you have till December the 27th to get your hands on it. So 44% off five full size products and three free gifts. Get your hands on it whilst you can. I'll leave the link in the description box down below. But the first product I regret buying is the Ordinary Retinol 1% in Squalene. Squalane. So let me start by saying this product is not bad at all. That's not why I regret buying it, but the reason I regret buying this is because it was too much, way too soon. This was my first retinol and I went straight in at a 1%, like an absolute idiot. Retinol is very well known for being able to pretty much target every skincare concern that we have, from fine lines to wrinkles, dark spots, dullness. It helps even out your skin tone. It's everything that a 30-year-old like myself should love and be looking for. However, retinol is also known for its ability to cause some irritation, often drying out the skin, some people experience peeling, and very concentrated areas of itching and irritation. And any professional who talks about retinol, and even the ordinary themselves, recommends starting from a low percentage, the lowest percentage and working your way up. That's something I would highly, highly recommend um, as someone who didn't do that. But in my rush to buy retinol, I thought I was buying a 0.1% retinol, but instead I got the 1%. The ordinary offer is 0.2% and up. So of course this dried me out super quick. I had a very, very tiny amount of peeling, not much irritation, I have to be honest, but a little bit of like, like a tickly itch, scratch itch. So because it was a 1%, instead of just rebuying it, I don't know why I just didn't get a low percentage, instead of using it the once a week that I wanted to start my retinol with, I had to use it like once every other week. And it definitely dried out my skin even then, but I was keeping it moisturized and hydrated, so it actually wasn't too bad. Of course, you had the squalane as well that did help. Seeing the results from retinol is such a slow process, one that I have all the patience in the world for, but the fact that I had to use this once every two weeks instead of using it um, once a week to start off with. And my starter retinol that was meant to be a gentle retinol, it kind of made me a bit like, oh, like I was scared about using retinol anyway and trying to work it into my routine. And the fact that I got the wrong one and then had to use it less than I wanted to, um, I was just a bit like, oh, like this is so much effort, but it was 100% my fault. But now my skin can handle a 1% and I use that two to three times a week. I'm using the Porter's Choice Retinol, um, which I love, like I absolutely love. I don't actually have an alternative for this because I feel like the Ordinary's retinols are such good introductory level retinols, the fact that you can start from 0.2 and work your way up. The Squalane really did help with um, any potential irritation, dryness, helped to soothe the skin, and I wasn't waking up as dry as I thought I was gonna wake up using a retinol, or had I used a retinol without something like Squalane in. Um, it's still a little bit dry, but not as dry as I went straight into a 1%. So I do think these are amazing, amazing retinol to start off with. The next product is, well, let me get out the packaging. The next product is a Glossier Invisible Shield, a daily sunscreen. This is a sunscreen with an SPF of 30. It came highly recommended. So a while back um, when I was buying products from my Glossier review, I had to purchase this one. I think I pretty much put everything other than the makeup. This was supposed to be an amazing sunscreen that came highly recommended. It was supposed to feel like nothing on the skin and give your skin a nice glow. Um, but it didn't. <laughs> this really has nothing on the Japanese and Korean sunscreens I use. This felt like a primer, um, like a cheap primer, like one of the very traditional what leaves your skin feeling like soft, like silky, but in a weird, horrible, mattified, fake way, do you know what I mean? And it gave me like a medium glow. Now I'm not saying like I'm like glowy glowy, but this didn't match my natural glow at all. In fact, I feel like this mattified me down a little bit and I, I didn't like the finish of it on my skin. And I, I do not like matte skin. I don't like matte skin. I don't like um, fake smooth feeling skin. It's just, th this gave me everything I don't like my skin looking like and feeling like. This has sweet orange peel in, and I know some fragrances have the potential to be irritating, 
but I believe Sweet Orange Pill is one of the worst fragrances. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's, it's a bit like, ugh. There's no point putting a fragrance in sunscreen. That's one thing I don't get as well. Like, why, why? <laughs> so I love chemical sunscreens, but I can't use all of them because they can irritate my skin more than a physical sunscreen. But physical sunscreens often leave a white cast on my skin. Um, and as someone with oily skin, I don't like them on my skin. But there are quite a few I can use, quite a few I can't use. I have to be very picky with it. This is one I definitely couldn't use because it did irritate my skin a lot. I get like little itchy patches on my skin and they, I'd end up getting little red bumps. And um, this also stung my eyes a hell of a lot as well. A lot, a lot. Like even the fragrance around my eyes, I was like, oh my God. I do think it's fairly priced. It's nothing revolutionary though, like a lot of reviews make it out to be. It, this has the type of watery light formulation that Korean and Japanese sunscreens have been doing for years now and doing it better than this. And often cheaper too. I can actually recommend 20 plus sunscreens that are cheaper and are better than this one. So the Bure Rich Aqua Watery Essence, UV Watery Essence 2019 edition is one of my all time favorites. If you watch my hauls, you know I order this in bulk, like in bulk bulk. I order like nine at one time. It has a formulation that works amazing on my oily skin. It's got alcohol in it, but it has this kind of like moisturizing factor to it as well, but it's not too heavy. The consistency is super light as well. So I do one layer, another layer. It's easy to spread all over your neck. It's easy to get into facial hair as well. And because of its light and easy to rub and consistency, it's easy to take out and reapply without having to look in a mirror. <laughs> I just love it. It's just my go-to sunscreen for everything. The next product I regret buying is the Garnier Moisture Bomb. I believe it's the night version. Okay, so here's the thing. This is the worst product I've ever used in my whole life ever. I hate this so, so, so much. I hate this for so many reasons. And I'm gonna tell you a few. The packaging is absolute shite. Like it's honestly one of the worst bits of packaging, visually, physically, that I've ever, ever come across. Like it sounds cheap as well. Like when you take the lid on and off, it all just sounds hollow and like like a yogurt pot. <laughs> I mean, like it's, there's something about it that just feels cheap. Second point is it feels cheap on the skin. There's nothing wrong with cheap products. I love the ordinary. I love CeraVe. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with cheap products if they're good, but this is crap and it feels cheap on the skin. So obviously it's a like watery gel consistency that just, it somehow feels like it sinks in too quick, but it also leaves this horrible fake moisturized feeling like a film on top of the skin. Like it's almost like it's just giving the impression that it's done something for your skin. It just feels horrible. More importantly, my skin hate it. It stung my skin like crazy. I never react like that to a moisturizer. I remember putting this on the evening and having having to rush out of bed to splash it off my face and apply like a thick layer of aloe vera gel to calm my skin down. It could have been the heavy amount of fragrance in there. Like there is an insane amount of fragrance in this product. And um, it could have been citric acid. I know my skin isn't too keen on that. It could have just been a mix of everything together and the fact that the product's absolute shit. I don't know, but it's horrible and I would not give this to my worst enemy. Like I, I it's just, Awful, awful. I actually got the whole of their Mo Garnier Moisture Bomb range and returned all the next day. I just didn't even want to risk putting that on my skin. Also, let me know if this is a thing. Okay, so I don't know if like, this is a touchy subject, but Garnier are a brand that are bringing out sheet masks um, and a lot of skincare that's, I would say inspired by Korean skincare and Japanese skincare, but it's literally just copying exactly what they're doing. And I feel like there should be some credit there. I feel like Garnier are literally ripping off what's been around in Asia forever and then like pretending that they've come up with it and pretending that it's this new innov innovative thing that they've done. And it bothers me, it really bothers me. Is, is this something, is this something? Or am I just being like, you're copying, I don't know. But these kind of moisturizing bomb, hydro gels, watery cream kind of products, uh, moisturizers, sorry, are so, so popular and they are amazing. When you find a good one, it's really, really good, but it's very difficult to find a good one. Delivering hydration and locking in that hydration and supplying moisture in a cream that's not too heavily, but is also nourishing, is quite a difficult thing to get right. And a lot of people have been asking about the Etude House Soon Jung Hydro Barrier Cream, and I really, really like it. I've only been using it for two weeks, but so far, I really like it. When I first used this, I thought it was gonna be way too light. It's got that feeling of a light weight 
um, watery hydro boosting gel cream. Like it's got that typical, almost like light jelly texture. Put it on the evening, I thought this isn't gonna do anything. It's way too light for me. I did feel instantly nice and nourished and moisturized, but I didn't feel like it was gonna be enough to last me through the night. But I used it in the evening and I woke up dewy and glowing and my skin still felt hydrated and it didn't feel dry and tight. And that's something that's difficult to maintain and for me, especially in winter when my skin does start to feel very dehydrated um, and I do get dehydrated skin, it suffers most at night. So this contains panthenol and madagascide to help soothe the skin and promote cell regeneration, as well as having a pH of 5.5, so slightly acidic, so perfect for your skin. So it's really gentle and non-irritating and it's such a nice product. So yeah, I'm only two weeks in, but it's a pretty safe bet to be honest. I think with the whole Etude House um, Soon Jung um, range, I think, I think it's quite safe for everyone. Okay, next up is the Peach and Lily Wild Dew Treatment Essence. Um, this product isn't bad. You can see I've not really used like a lot. <laughs> It's just an okay product. This is an essence in the traditional sense that has got niacinamide in. It has fermented ingredients, sodium hyaluronate. So it's hydrating and correcting when it comes to the skin tone, dark circles, can potentially help with fine lines. This also contains a few extra things like radish leaf extract. They claim this helps nourish the skin and prevent um, premature aging. And lotus extract that they claim um, helps with um, sun damage. Free radical damage from the sun um, protects against pollution stress stresses in the environment um but I feel like they're a bit like it's just okay I feel like th those two ingredients kind of just like a little bit like like do they though <laughs> do you know I mean I, I feel like they're a little bit pointless a little bit gimmicky dare I say I feel like this whole product is like a diet version of an essence like when you have a diet coke and the, the taste of coke is there but it's a bit disappointing because all you really wanted was a full fat that's kind of how this feels I'm, I'm more of a Pepsi Max guy myself it's a basic essence with what I feel is a few gimmicky ingredients I'm just a little bit under underwhelmed by it and do I regret buying it? I do a little bit because it's quite pricey. At $39 I feel like it's a little bit steep for what it is and it's just a little, little bit of a letdown. But I do feel like I've been a little bit spoilt with essences. I feel like I the few that I've tried have been really good and I've picked what are best sellers and you know most popular um, products. So not a lot of essences are going to impress me more than the ones that I already use. So I will be reviewing Peach and Lily as a brand eventually. My skin, I had to cut down on skincare for a little bit because my skin became a little bit irritated. Um, no spoilers, but I do like the vast majority of their products. No surprise here, but my alternative is going to be the Neogen Dermology Micro Ferment, no, fer Real Ferment Micro Essence. An essence that I feel is actually worth the price tag of $35. It just goes that one step further than uh, your traditional essence, but also whatever this does. It's got that rice ferment filtrate in there, which brightens my skin, it hydrates my skin, evens out skin tone and it gives me that glass skin look that um, a lot of us like in an instant. Contains the fermented ingredients that I look for in uh, my essence for kind of like fine lines, wrinkles, anti-aging. And now I'm not sure though if it contains niacinamide because I look, every website I look on says something different. Soco Glam says it contains niacinamide and I kind of trust their um, product knowledge, so I'm gonna say that it has niacinamide in. But yes, I love it. You can get other traditional essences for a lot cheaper um, that still do the job. Yes, I just think this is average and highly priced. And terrified, it's in a glass bottle and I'm, I'm terrified of smashing it. And finally we have the Cosrx Propolis Light Ample. It's just there, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just like sitting on my shelf. Remember, I don't know if you watched it, but in the video about um, products that I've not even opened, that one was in there. I got a lot of feedback on that, saying that um, I should give it a go, because a lot of people like it. I had actually already given that ample to a friend of mine who I thought could benefit benefit from it a lot more than I could. So I re-bought it, because a lot of people like try it so I got it again and I haven't touched it again it's just on my shelf for display and I don't know why I keep ignoring it well I, I do know why I keep ignoring it for me as a serum is a little bit bland this serum has a huge percentage of propolis in it 80% propolis so very potent main ingredients and propolis adds moisture to the skin. It contains amino acids and vitamins, as well as helping to smooth the skin and enhance moisture retention. It sounds like everything I would want, but from a moisturizer. And it is everything I get from a moisturizer. For me, the serum stage of the skincare routine is to give your skin some ingredients and benefits that your skin doesn't necessarily get from other stages of the routine. So if your serum is basically just your moisturizer, I feel like it's a bit of a waste of 
a step. I mean, sure, if you want an extra amount of moisture, then go for it. But I feel like I can get that, again, from other steps in my routine. And even though I do use hyaluronic acid nearly every day, I kind of count that as like a, a in-between moisturizer and serum stage, if that makes sense. So that is actually the older version of the ampoule. They've got a new one um, that's in like that. <laughs> so you actually get more product, but it's actually the exact same ingredients. So here's an alternative that I've actually been using on and off recently. This is the Iunique Propolis Vitamin Synergy serum. I actually just started using this and I'm really, really liking it. But what led me to buying another propolis serum? Well, this contains propolis, obviously, but it's also packed with so many other ingredients that for me make sense in that serum stage, that ample serum stage. So this contains sea buckthorn extract. And where do we know that from? Then I met you. There. So that contains sugary alcohols, vitamin E and K, and a generous amount of vitamin C as well. Then you also have niacinamide in the serum to help brighten your skin, one of my favorite ingredients. It does a lot more than that. And finally, centella as one of its key ingredients to help soothe the skin. And you can feel that. You can feel that pretty instantly on your skin. But yeah, I like it. You see the difference? Like, it's just kind of like propolis, and that's kind of it, and a few moisturizing bits. And the other one is propolis mixed with a load more other bits that I feel like you can really, really benefit from that particular stage with a serum. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just keep, it's just one of those products. It's not a bad product, it's good. If you've got very, very dry skin, you'll probably love it. But I just feel like I do so many other steps, it's kind of like a wasted step for me. But yes, those are the products that I'm, I'm, I do regret buying, mainly because of, of money. But let me know the products you regret buying and their better alternatives down below. Or if you have a product that you're not really loving, why don't you ask everyone else what their kind of alternative would be in the comments down below. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.